So, Sean, thank you very much for allowing me to, to come into the business today. I've, I've obviously known you old and you've very kindly attended some of the things that we've done yeah. um, over the years. Can you just tell um, the, the folk down the other end of this, uh, the, this camera a little bit of background in yourself and the business? Sure. Well, should I start with Hulhan Loki? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. So Hulhan Loki is a uh, mid-market M&A advisory firm. We're actually based in America. We're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It's about a $3 billion market cap business okay. uh, with $1.1 billion of revenue. 100% of that revenue is advisory based. So we're not lending money. We're not underwriting. We're not doing equity, any equity research, sales or trading. We are purely selling our advice. Okay. And most of our advice involves around helping people buy businesses, sell businesses, or raise capital. Yeah, okay, and so the people that you're advising, s sorry for the, the silly question, but why do they need your help? How, how can you, what are the specifics? How can you advise them on such a, I suppose, I'm answering my own questions, on such a complex matter, how can you advise them? I think that's precisely it. You know, buying a business is sufficiently, is much more complicated than buying a house. Yeah. So a house is a certain size, it's a certain amount of square foot, it's in a street, it doesn't change. Yeah. A business changes every single day, yeah. and also, business, the value of a business, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yep. Whereas for a house, it's simple, you measure it up, you work out what the house next door sold for per square foot, you apply that to your house, that gives you a value. For a business, every business is different. No two businesses are the same, they change every day. So our job, if you're thinking of selling your business, is advising you how best to position the business for sale, yep. okay. the strategic direction you want to take it in, who the buyers are, when is the right time to approach them, what the tactics, what the strategy are, and how to make the business as attractive as possible to that buyer universe. Yep, okay, and, and I suppose it's such a big uh, topic, but you must get asked it on a number of occasions. If there's a particular company that wants to look to uh, make itself as saleable as, as possible to the correct buyer for the long term, what, what would your key advice be? Is, is, this, is this sort of five bullet points that you would rattle off to them? I know it's gonna be complex, but what would be the main things that you'd be looking at for a business to advise them to for a, for a positive sale? Well, the most important thing is to work out an early stage who the likely buyers are for right, your business. that way, okay. Yep, yeah. so you start from the reverse. Okay. Say, who, who are the most likely buyers for this business? And then the second question is, what do I need to do to my business today yep. to make it as attractive as possible to that group of buyers? Yep. And that may mean slight changes to the strategic direction, okay. uh, or it may mean pulling out of something or spending more time in a different area, uh, just to fine tune the business a little bit. Okay. And then the third area is all about timing. So it's not generally advisable, if you're thinking of selling your business, to write an information memorandum ring up the potential buyer and say, are you interested, the information memorandum's ready, and you've got five weeks to make me an offer. Because a lot of buyers simply can't move in that time frame. Yep. So a lot of preparation work, and what we call pre-marketing goes on, yep. where I will spend my time talking to the potential buyers well in advance of a process, okay. trying to get them excited about the opportunity, trying to get them to work out what they would do if they were the owner of the business, yep. how they would integrate it into their own business, how they would uh, improve the top line, yep. whether there are any cost rationalizations that they can make, whether it's factories or pack houses uh, that, that both businesses, if you combine them, would yep. not need and therefore significant okay. costs. So that's, that's really interesting. You look at my naivety, but I think I'll probably follow a lot of people in the sector that I actually thought. Uh, you'd be going into the business that's looking to sell to look to change that, but it's actually going the other way around to see what would be attractive to a potential buyer. And it's then, both. Okay. It's both. Okay. So, so you have, you, but you start from who yep. the buyer is, okay. and you try and understand what that buyer's business model is, and then why the business that you are selling should be attractive yep. to that buyer, okay. and what that buyer can do with the business over okay. and above the current share. Okay, so we talked about sellers. Presumably you represent buyers as well. That we you, do. You'll be working with clients who are stating to you, Sean, um, in Q3, Q4, 2020, 2020 we're, we're looking for this in this country, that country. So, yep. okay. Yep. So, yep. so, so just to um, indicate that with this network that you've got, the reach yep. isn't parochial, it's not 25 miles outside of London, it is global. No, that's true. So, so Julian Loki, uh, we have 1,600 employees in 24 wow. offices around the world. Okay. Uh, we do about 300 transactions every year. Yep. Uh, so we are experts in, in our area, 
And for somebody who's looking to make an acquisition, we can help them find the right acquisition. We can give them advice on the strategy and the tactics and how to how to approach it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not like going into a shop. You can't go into a shop and buy a can of baked beans. There isn't a company shop. Yeah. So the ideal target may not be there. And if it is there, it may not be available at the price you want at the time you want. Yeah. So when you're looking to buy, you have to be a little bit more opportunistic. Yeah. But we can certainly identify the targets and work with the buyer to work out what the best tactics are. Okay, and presumably the last three, four, five years, your your portfolio of, um, of um, clients that you've assisted has been in the traditional food sector? Because we, we were talking earlier about um, innovation that's coming along at a, at a, at a pace. Are mm. you seeing a, a change of yeah. your, your, your client's portfolio, or is it still a, a, a standard model that you've seen over the last three, four, five years? We complete about 25 to 30 food transactions globally every year. So we're doing one every fortnight or so. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and when you're doing that number of deals in the food sector alone, it covers the full gamut of food activities. So there are some things that are gonna be less interesting to you and the people watching uh, watching this, such as pet food, yep. uh, uh, or packaged consumer brands, or jams, or snack food, or whatever. But we, we will do the full range, everything from, uh, from, from the very high growth, high branded, very high valuation assets, yep. to the more commoditized, lower margin, uh, lower growth assets. Yeah, and and the market in in general, we're, we're where we're now, middle of June. It's raining outside. That's how it feels uh, on the political scene. Um, is that affecting things within the market in in the UK and internationally? Or in the UK, yes, it is impacting it, and and that's really to do with the gap between the valuation uh, expectations of the sellers and yep. the valuation expectations of the buyers. But that's a very UK centric issue and it's to do with the issues around Brexit and the political uncertainty. Uh, internationally, that is much less of an issue. Yeah. So if I take the last 10, 12 consumer transactions that, that Hula and Loki has done out of the office here in London, which covers all of continental Europe, by the way, I think only one of them has been a business headquartered in the UK. Really? Because okay. there is that gap in valuation expectations between the buyer and the seller. And, and the buyers are tending to say, well, what if this Brexit scenario, this political scenario occurs, that could adversely damage the profitability of the business I'm buying, yep. and therefore I don't want to pay too much for it yep. in case the profitability declines after I've bought it and I look a schmuck. Uh, okay. Now, across continental Europe, there are different challenges, there are different political issues, but the uh, variability of the profit stream that you're buying is probably not going to be as volatile as it could be here. Got it. Thank you. So, Sean, I'm sure if it's, it's okay to, to reach out to our contacts, but if, if anyone is looking to uh, buy or sell within the food sectors, you'd be open to an exploratory conversation with them, I presume? That's what we do. Because I have found that Sean has been very good um, over the years. When I've introduced people to you, you've been very kind to meet individuals, to network with them, to give them advice as to where you think yeah. that they should go and where the market is, uh, has gone. And I've, I found, found that invaluable with some of the people that we've presented over to you. So if you, if you want uh, more information on Sean, and we'll put it on all the links um, top and bottom. Um, but thank you very much. And just to wrap up, what is your favorite fresh produce? A banana. <laughs> Excellent. Very simple. Well done. Sean, thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you.